just a, a word of warning. If, if no one's ever heard me talk before, um, I think I think a wee bit differently. And a lot of um, preachers, it's like you're, you've got a train and it's going along, and if you interrupt, you might derail their train of thought. I, I don't think linearly. I think sort of all over the place at once. So beforehand, when I'm preparing a sermon, it's like a train crash of about seven different trains in the middle and so if you ever want to ask a question um, you won't disturb my train of thought because you'll probably help me pick up something I've lost in the process somewhere around the place. Um, and it might be a bit more scattered than usual because I'm going in about two hours three hours of sleep but hopefully I'll generate some interest and you can come back to me okay so th- this sermon started off as something on um, creationism and evolution and the whole um, how we understand or how we present our faith to, to people who are aware of scientific interpretations of the world. But then it kind of it, the sermon itself evolved a bit um, because uh, it, in some ways that's way down the line and you have to before you get there, um, before you get to that particular train crash, you have to start um, with how, how you actually know. And um, so, um, I want to start off with this first because this is the basis um, of where I start thinking of this: is that knowledge p- puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, He does not yet know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. It's that um, part part of the trouble we we have as human beings, we're very we're small and we we don't know. And in all the conflicts between different interpretations of things or science, be faith, it, it boils down to what we don't know about it and what we decide we know but ultimately scripture teaches us that we start from a, a place that we don't know we need, we're need we in need of God's revelation and that our, our certainty comes out of a different place it's not about knowing all the answers and putting it all together but it's about uh, God's love for us come across this quote which was good okay this is from Thomas Aquinas two rules are to be observed as Augustine teaches the first is to hold to the truth of scripture without wavering the second that is that since holy scripture can be explained in a multiplicity of senses one should not adhere to a particular explanation only in such a measure as to be ready to abandon it abandon it if proved with certainty to be false lest holy scripture be exposed to the ridicule of unbelievers and obstacles be placed to their believing um, th- this is b- basically the, the crux of what I want to emphasize is that in, in approaching scripture and in approaching what we know that we approach in a, an att- attitude of, of humility that there's vast things that we don't know and also that there are many other people with parts of the picture that we don't have that need to be joined together in the church. And the, part of the wisdom of God's church is that he didn't give anyone the full picture so that we would actually need each other. Because he's much more interested in the relational uh, outworking of, of his truth. It, it's not about... Um, fathoming all the mysteries because in the end if we do all that without love we're just clanging gongs so he God has deliberately set it up so that until we reach perfection until we see him face to face until we're perfected in love that we need each other and we don't have all the full picture we only have bits and pieces so in approaching how we know we need to start from the place of um, holding certain things loosely and 
um, holding on to relationship and holding on to other people in the church fundamentally. So we've got um, God's truth is unwavering. It's solid, but our apprehension of that is always going to be partial or or we we see through a glass we see as a reflection dimly we don't see clearly so in holding on to um, what we know we need to hold on to certain things lightly uh, and but in believing absolutely still in his revelation in his his truth but approach it in that uh, humility um, yep thanks for this is emphasised in 1 Corinthians 13. So love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish ways behind me. Now we see in a but a poor reflection as in a mirror, then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And the next passage emphasizes that God gave different bits to different people. And Jesus gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some pastors and some teachers to prepare us so that we may be built up until we reach unity in the faith. And that's still to come. Uh, There's some teaching that when the perfect came, that meant when scripture was formed. But the perfect coming is about reaching that goal of unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and becoming mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ and that as a whole as a whole church when you look at that we're not there yet and um, the ultimate goal of what we know we're trying to figure out what um, the, the core of it um, has to be about being built up into Christ it's about a relational growing as well as um, in it, um, our knowledge or our understanding growing and the goal is ultimately in how we know stuff is in relation to both the local church and the wider church. just want to talk about different bases of knowing within the church. There's different emphasis in different churches. Uh, in, the, in the Orthodox Church, uh, there, there hasn't been very much uh, change in theology. There, there have very much kept a hold of all the the early fathers and what they said and the the traditions are very important to be handed on down and that's mentioned in scripture that Paul is talking about the scriptures but there's also Paul talks about what I passed on to you and the same, same word is traditions and it's separated out from traditions of men on one hand and what is actually passed on from Jesus and from the apostles and um, so in, in exploring what is revealed that's the emphasis in the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church there's a lot more progression in theology and actually some things changed like for instance certain doctrines came in like the uh, infallibility of the Pope or um, the assumption of Mary into heaven that weren't um, believed by the, the first Christians, and but um, the the emphasis of how you know generally within the Catholic Church um, is it, is on reason explaining, and um, th- there was a strong em- emphasis on natural theology, and so you've got natural theology, uh, sort of what can be understood from. Uh, just thinking and from creation and also the authority of the church and bo- both those are emphasized in scripture as well that um, we're to use our reason to
to to work things out, and that the church is given authority that um, we were given authority to bind things on heaven or or bind things on earth and they or loose them on earth and they God does something then in heaven corresponding to that. That um, but it it's not the it shouldn't be like one or the other. It has to be that these things um, in in connection and union to, to, together. And then the Protestant churches are um, when the Protestant church was created. There's a whole plethora of breaking down and splitting of, of the church um, based on an individual's own interpretation of Scripture. And what? No, it's not that the fundamental basis was wrong. The scripture, it, there, there's a within scripture, there's a there's an openness for every believer to come and to to get something out of it. Part of the problem here with the splits is that one strand of what is partial knowledge is emphasized as absolute. It's made absolute. So if in the Orthodox Church you, tradition is seen as defining the boundaries of all the faith or within the Catholic Church what the Pope says or within the Protestant traditions it's um, individual interpretations. And the, the trouble is that the the splits aren't caused by people differing. The splits are caused by people not um, valuing the other parts that they don't have. That it's it's the lack of love and the lack of humility. That there are different parts that need to be brought together to get the whole. We don't have the whole picture. And um, I mean, there's a vast resource of what the early church fathers taught that we're disconnected from or th- there's the whole revelation of God um, won't be made manifest until we see him face to face but the, the parts um, are f- we, we get through relationship in the body, we, that's where his fullest revelation now is. And to um, to hold on to that one thing and make it absolute, both is not the basis that God set for certainty, which is His love, is Jesus' revelation it, of who He is. Um, and to, just a couple of examples. Um, of particular interpretations. If you, this is building up to how people look at um, cre- creation, which I'll, I'll talk about some other time. But th- this is an example of, of a description of Solomon's beautiful bride uh, from Solomon, uh, Song of Songs, chapters four and seven, and I found this. Um, literalist's interpretation of um, what that would actually look like. Okay. How beautiful you are, my beloved. How beautiful you are. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats. Your teeth are like a flock of newly shorn ewes. Your lips are like a scarlet thread. Your temples are like a slice of pomegranate. Your neck is like the Tower of David, built with rows of stones, on which is, are hung a thousand shields. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle, which feed among the lilies. Your lips, my bride, drip honey. Honey, I think Pooh Bear there is an artistic license under the tongue. Honey and milk are under your tongue, and the fragrance 
of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. Your belly is like a heap of wheat. Your nose is like the Tower of Lebanon, which faces towards Damascus. So, I mean, that, that's a, an obvious example where just the literalist interpretation, individual interpretation of what you read is what it means, just totally breaks down. And in coming to Genesis 1, that same kind of thinking is seen in certain portions of the church that because they've set up an absolute um, value of an individual's own interpretation it's only scripture and there, it's only my, my interpretation of scripture without reference to the historical church, the traditions or the authority of the, the local body and the how it balances all those unknown areas with the, all the other views and um, it makes it, it makes the, it into a conflict when in, in reality there is no um, conflict, it's just about um, stuff that we don't know that, so that we couldn't, couldn't possibly know and we won't know fully until we see face to face with God um, okay. okay. Here's a quote from Augustine. Usually even a non-Christian knows something about the earth, the heavens, and the other elements of this world, about the motion and orbit of the stars and even their size and relative positions, about predictable eclipses of the sun and moon, the cycles of the years and seasons, about the kinds of animals, shrubs and stones and so forth. And this knowledge he, uh, he holds to as being certain from reason and experience. Now this is, now it is a disgraceful and dangerous thing for an unbeliever to hear a Christian presumably giving the meaning of Holy Scripture, talking nonsense on these topics. And we should take all means to prevent such an embarrassing situation in which people show up vast ignorance in a Christian and laugh at the scorn. And my feeling is, unfortunately, that um, a lot of the creationist um, tirade against science and their produ- pr- producing apparent counter-arguments ag- against things is in this vein, that they've been made, made up their mind and they ignore a whole range of breaching its... its and it's not presenting the humility that we don't know, but we're certain of God's love, and that's our basis for certainty. And um, it gets in the way of communicating ultimately the gospel. So you don't, you know. And one of the other things in interpreting. Um, the Bible is that concepts and meanings of words change through time so that um, many thousands of years ago many people believed the earth was flat for instance and and later on that was a complete map of the world in the, about 1400 um, where Africa connects on to Antarctica and there's no Australia and no Americas. So that, that's what world meant in that time. And for us now it's more like that. And then only within the last um, 50 years we've been, been getting images of Earth from space. So there's... Um, Part of our trouble in interpreting scripture as well and trying to relate it to um, what science is saying is that the, the very concepts themselves as revealed to those people in those times we can't project back our modern day understanding on those words and expect um, them to hold up because it, it's just not going to accurate. And on the other side, you've got science, the problem with science being um, t- 
to to study all this and actually miss the point and miss the wonder, miss the revelation of purpose that has us here as such an absolutely mind-blowing thing to 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 study that and miss the whole re- reason it's to to miss the message that the heavens are declaring um, is crazy and. Um, that's okay I'll just finish off quickly I think okay so I'm going to finish with um, a couple of verses about where certainty does come from this is what the Lord says let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, the strong man boast of his strength, the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts about the boast boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness in, on the earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. And one from John, John First John. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. I think I'll just finish there. So, I just want to emphasize that um, in presenting what our faith and presenting what we know and in, in seeking for um, un- understanding and with scripture or in integrating that with any understanding we need to approach it with humility that we don't know we need to approach it in relationship because we've only got part and the the rest of the church needs to contribute to how we know as well. Um, just for, for instance, the, the, the all, all of truth can't be contained in one way of seeing things like maths or science or music or art. It's to to hold on to our own perspective. In, in exclusion to others, it, it, it just um, re- reduces the richness of what God gives us. And finally, that we can be certain um, about who God is and the revelation of of who He is to us in the community through his love for us and his love for us being expressed in, the, in his body. Okay. Let's get some coffee and if anyone wants to come back that'd be cool. <laughs>